Good morning. Welcome back to the Global City of Refuge. I am Apostle Ben Ruel. And I'm TC. It's my beautiful wife, a powerful woman of God, a woman of discernment, a woman of wisdom, a woman of strength and power in the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 The Bible said the two should become one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The two should become one, should be unified. And we are unified for the purpose and the glory of Christ. And that's why God is unifying us all as saints for his purpose and for his glory. God can do nothing without unity. He, he can do nothing without one accordness. And when there is a, 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 a mole that will hamper the, the will of God, when there is a Judas, when there is a Judas, Judas will always hang themselves. They will always hang themselves. Some people are Peters, and, and then Peters feels like, oh, well, I just make too many mistakes. I put my foot in my mouth sometimes, and no, 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 no. Well, you, you're going to strengthen your brothers when you're converted. So before I continue, please share. Share, share, like, and subscribe and if you're new, and because we're going to be talking about some things. I told you 2024, we're going to kick some things off. We're going to talk about some things because what we've been talking about in 2023 is starting to happen and manifest. Things are happening in this world. As we've been preparing you in 2022 for 2023 and the things that we said surely have come to pass. Amen. And Amen. in 2023 for 2024, and it surely has come to pass. Now, in 2024, we prepare you for what's going to happen the rest of this year and going forward. Because this is not about a going to church thing. This is not about doing church thing. This is not about playing church thing. This is about the ecclesia, the called out ones, the church, standing up for Christ and standing out as a light in this world to make a difference in the lives of people, to stand up as a light against Without, a dark, without darkness, mm, without darkness, I want y'all to think about that. Without darkness, you have nothing but light. Darkness comes to try to override the light. Darkness comes, I love that song, I Shall Not Fear, because that fear comes to override your light. Mm -hmm. The power, the grace, the glory of God in and through your life. So we, we, we're really gonna, we're gonna indulge in some things. We're gonna revelate some things to some. We're gonna confirm some things to, other, to others. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about some things that is taboo in the church that folk don't wanna talk about, but everybody's dealing with in the world and in the dark regions. Yeah, and I just wanna, before we get into everything, I just want to, bring a little understanding because I think we've gotten to the mode of just going to a place mm -hmm. that we call church to listen to a good word and then go home and that's it. But really we're coming together to be equipped. We're coming together to be strengthened. We're coming together because we were out there. Now we come together to get, um, you know, uh, renewed, rejuvenated, uh, re-inspired, encouraged. Maybe we'd messed up, so we gotta be rebuked so that we can change and go forth in, in no longer in error. So we're coming together for a purpose, not just in here, but more so out there. So we come together, you get equipped and ready to go back out to do whatever it is the Lord has given you to do personally. So I just wanted to add that because I think, you know, we get into such a mode of habit of just, I'm going here to listen, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, listen to something cool or encouraging, but then what? It's like, what do we do with it? We just throw it away or we just put it in our pocket and forget about it or what what happens to what we've received it's literally supposed to be used as a tool 
for when you leave here. It's literally supposed to be used as a way to now conform and shape you into someone closer to the image and similitude of Christ than when you first came. So I, I, I just wanted to add that. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage some folk out there. I want to encourage some men of God, some women of God, some people of God, some followers of Jesus, those who love and want to do the will of the Father. God is about to do a powerful thing. And I encourage each and every one of you here and online to stick to God, stick to Jesus, stick to his will. Don't let emotions, don't let folk, don't let family deter you from doing the will of God. It's been the pattern in this ministry. Every time God's about to do something awesome, somebody rises up, usually somebody close to me, even family, to distract and destroy the work of God. And I'm saying this because I got out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Two witnesses said the same thing. Two witnesses said the same thing. And, 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 and even as I was concerned last Sunday, I'm still a little concerned that those negative, evil, demonic seeds were planted in the people and is leading them astray. So the, the, the best thing to do is pray and ask the Holy Spirit for truth. We can't go through our emotions because usually when, when things look like something that we've experienced and then we hear something, the enemy can latch on to that thing and it's totally different from what it is. The very first thing that Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that the spirit of Jezebel rises up, makes herself a teacher, deceive many, and cause many to be in bed with her. That's not literally in bed, but that means in cahoots, in agreement. They don't even understand that they've been brought under a spell of witchcraft. Because it says it seduces my people to fornication. Now, this is a spirit. So we're talking about the bed. We're not talking about sexual fornication, but we're talking about fornication by getting involved with other spirits beside the spirit of God. And, and also, he said, you know, really just get my people to eat things, sacrifice to idols. You, do you know there are words that people, folks are preaching that they sacrifice the word of God to an idol or to a demon to feed it to people to pollute them? I'm telling you this stuff because I know it. I've seen this stuff over and over again. I've been saved for over 30 years. I've seen this stuff over and over again. He that has an ear, let them hear. Let their eyes be open. Let your hearts be able to understand and perceive what the Spirit of God is saying. Every time there's a move of God, there is something or someone that will try to distract and discourage and, and delay and deny what God wants. And usually these type of people are ruled by their emotions. Ruled by, that's why I, I've said all through 2002, 2003, whoever rules your emotions rules you. 22 and 23, what I say? I'm sorry, 2022 to 2023. Whatever rules your emotions will rule you. And whatever rules you can move you how it wants to maneuver you against the will of God. Hold fast and stand fast, Paul said, in the things that you've learned and the things that you've seen. Because what's about to happen is so very important. It's so very integral for everyone, not just here. Not just all of humanity, what's about to happen is so significant, and the devil knows his time is short. So he want to sow seeds of discord. He want to sow seeds of chaos. He want to sow seeds of confusion. And if that chaos, if that confusion can mingle with some hurt or anger that's already in you, because we've seen this, it's going to drive you off. And you're going to think it's God talking to you. But it's not God, because it's not the word of God. Is not the way of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. 
That's how we can tell those who are of the devil and those who are of Jesus. So what we're going to talk about today is so very important. And the enemy, Satan, is real, and he does not want us to get this. He doesn't want us to get to this place. He doesn't want us to show forth the light, the power, and the glory is gospel of Jesus Christ. He doesn't want us to stand together. He doesn't want us to preach in the season, out of season. He, don't, he doesn't want us to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and his fire, the power of God to manifest the glory of God, to set many captives free. My wife and I, as well as others, has given our lives to this thing, has sacrificed everything in our lives for this thing. Had never tried to, you know, take people money, steal money, manipulate for money, or, or, or anything else. People money, honey, or bunny. But we stand sure in the gospel as God, the Father in heaven, is our witness to do his will. He said, bring my people back to me. He said, strengthen your brethren. He said, prepare them for my return. And all these things have been confirmed even lately. Stay on track, saints. Look not to the left nor to the right. Stay on track. Because guess what? I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the right. My wife is not looking to the left. Looking to the right. Our eyes is focused on Jesus. His will, his purpose, and his plan. That trumps everything. Everything. It doesn't matter what people think, friends, family, enemies. It doesn't matter what Satan says. It doesn't matter what folks that you was close with at one time says. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those who do the will of my father. So anybody that stands against the will of God... You still love them and pray for them, but don't let them hinder you from doing the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so we're talking about, we, this is the continuation from uh, the Bible study before last, not just past Bible study. Sunday we had the meeting, the, the Bible study before that. The Acts of 2024. The subtitle will be Quit Ye Like Men. That's a Bible term. It's a biblical phrase. That's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're going to talk about that. Because it's time for the soldiers of Christ, for the warriors of this gospel. We don't war against people. Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, Rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. We fight against that thing, those things that are in the unseen realm that manipulates and control things and people in the natural realm. It's time to grow up and come to an understanding of the truth. Some of the things we're going to talk about today might empower others. And I encourage you, like the song said, I will not fear. Fear not. Because these things are certainly true, and it shall surely come to pass. And we, as the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, the stand out ones, the empowered ones, are here to help people to be free, to come into the knowledge of the truth, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God, and to be made free, to be liberated from fear, from sickness, from disease, from every demonic entity that would attack us, that would come into this world. Knowing that if something was materializing here, nobody would be afraid. Yeah. But that we all would stand in power and look at it face to face. Because I have stuff materialized in front of me. And I believe I know the principality's name. It's the ruler, I believe, of the occult. And I stand and stood on face to face and said, you have no place here. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority or power here. And it disappeared. You okay? Yeah. My, my, <laughs> I'm telling you, my spirit man is on fire. 
you gonna say? I, yes, I wanted to add that um, one of the things that the Lord dealt with me about early on um, in my walk was um, I really did not like confrontation. I just, I was like, ah, uh, it's just so uncomfortable, right? When, when, when two people are at odds or there's something that needs to be dealt with and you know you don't want to say anything or bring it up it's so uncomfortable right so i was just like lord i don't like any of that i don't want to deal with none of that but do you know that the root of spiritual warfare is confrontation it's literally confronting something that has no legal right to be doing what they're doing, to be where they, they are. So there is a contention that happens. So if I'm afraid or I don't want to confront somebody because of something naturally, I'm not going to confront a spirit. And it's so funny because we were talking before service and someone brought up um, the whole Miami thing with the, you know, dark shadows and whatnot. And, I mean, they were going around in circles of what, you know, we were like, what would you do if you were there? Well, I know what I would do. I'd do it every day. <laughs> but what would you do if you were there? Would you run? Right. Or, or let's ask this question. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Go ahead. Right. So it was like a... This person was like work, I was working themselves up to, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure, Lord, you here? Are you here? Like, okay, okay. And next, what would you, okay, you gotta build yourself up. You know, would you, would you go, would you charge it? Or would you just be from where you are? And I'm just like, just rebuke it in Jesus' name. Just rebuke it. That's it. You don't have to work yourself up. You don't have to think, it's, it's really, you don't even have to think about it. Just, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. That's it. But if you've never been face to face with something like that, then all of those things come into play. And then you're also scared or, you know, again, it's a it's it's not just like if I'm standing in front of you and it's like I know you. We we've, we've known each other since we were kids. So there's I don't feel any anything from you, right? But what if you see this being standing in front of you and guess let me tell you you're gonna feel every bit of what that thing is emanating right so it's it's gonna be literally emanating fear doubt uh you know terror terror so those, those things are tyrants right they're tyrants right the bible called them the word nephilim means tyrant Right. So they bullies. Right, exactly. That's what I was just going to say. If you've ever met anybody in your life growing up as a child that was a bully in school, like literally you, just being around this person, you feel, you know, that contention. You feel that fear. You feel whatever it is that that person has lorded over you. That's that's something very similar, probably times 10 that you're going to feel and being in this presence of this this being so what is that it's confrontation so now you're faced with am i gonna confront this thing or am i gonna run because for years as we know the gifts are without repentance meaning you have most well some people have certain gifts from birth so i had the gift to see these things from birth so I was just like, okay, I'm going this way. You that way, I'm going this way. Or I would just cover my eyes <laughs> or whatever. I was terrified. So there's a confrontation that has to happen because they're not going to leave. Why? Even if you ask them nicely, they're not, why? Their, their main job is to... Um, would occupy. So how do you get rid of these things? Through confrontation 
not the kind that we know of, but literally us just standing, uh, sitting in our seat with and with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and, and walking in that dominion and authority that he's given us. And knowing that because I have the Holy Spirit within me, who is all power over every single being, I don't care how big you are. I don't care how gruesome you look. I don't care if it's the devil himself. Because we have had the devil himself appear in many different ways. I've even seen him one time. He came as a huge dragon. I don't care. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Now go. And that's it. But there's still a confrontation. So I, wa I just wanted to, before we get into anything, to really get everybody's mind in the right place that we are at war. Okay? So it's not nice. It's not polite. It's not politically correct. It's literally confrontation against the enemy. Not people, but the enemy. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to speak to everybody here and speak to everyone that's watching live and via recording. Amen. See, this is for those who are tired of being, who's sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is for those who are in church that's saying it's got to be more to God than this. It's got to be more. This is for those witches and warlocks who are afraid that this, I can't get out of this. Or those who sold them souls, their souls that say, I, the devil got more power, I, I can't get out of this. This is a word for those who are wanting to do the will of God, that are not moved by the world, by self, by emotions, or by the things that are in it. This word is for those. This ministry are for those who are ready to, and willing to be about the will of our Father which is in heaven, to walk in the power of Christ, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to set people free, so that blind eyes can see and deaf ears can hear and mute mouths can speak. All these things we've done, these are things that Jesus, these are the things these are the things that Jesus both began to do and to teach. Yeah. How long have you guys heard, me, heard us say that? Yeah, That's the scripture. These are the things. That's what Jesus said to do in, Matthew, in, in Mark chapter number 16. To cast out devils. If somebody in a coma, call them out of your coma. Yeah. As we've done. Right. And I, I do want to say, though, it doesn't necessarily, it can start there. But for me, it was literally just um, one example was I was working at my job and they were um, going to promote me. And so they gave me an offer letter. Right. And the Lord was like, I want you to ask for more. And I'm like, ah, I just, Lord, I just want to take what they want to give me. And he was like, no, ask for more. But that was that, I don't want any confrontation. I don't want to seem a certain type of way. And that's rooted in fear. It is. So this little gesture or, or act or communication, transaction, seemingly nothing, right? But it was literally tied to what I would be facing spiritually very soon. So it, it starts there naturally in these little, these little uh, transactions or these little um, communications with one another that it's like, ah, do you feel like, I don't know if I can say that. I don't know if I can bring this up. I don't know if I can. Well, then there's something that the Lord is working out of you so that that's no longer there. Because if you're like that with men, you will be like that <laughs> with, this, with the things of the Spirit. It just, it is what it is. Right. Right. I'm telling you. God told me, I think it was a week before last. God said, my people must take this time more seriously. You remember me saying that? Got to take it more seriously. Because we are living in serious times. 
Not that we can't have fun. We always have fun. We joke and laugh and all that kind of stuff. But we know when the Spirit of the Lord step in, we feel his presence or we discern something, we snap right to it yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. So if, if you not only just want to go to church, but if you want to know Jesus, not just by his name, but if you want to know him and the power of his resurrection. And Paul said in the fellowship of his suffering, because folk been suffering and any of you been, you know, deteriorating people's faith because of the suffering, but the suffering is that we might know him, that we might know the king of kings, that we might know the Lord of lords. The enemy's goal and purpose is to shake our faith in Christ, but I encourage you all, I charge you all by the mercies of the Lord Jesus Christ. I beseech you all to stand, having done all to stand, stand there for. Stay upon the rock, rooted and grounded in him, in the truth. Because Jesus said you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. This is for folk who are tired of being spiritually attacked and feel like you have no power. It's time to, the enemy intimidating you and, 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 and coming at you all different kind of ways, spiritually and mentally, psychologically, hearing voices, seeing shadows. Read Job chapter 4. The, one of Job's friends said he saw a shadow that passed by him. His hair stood up on his body and the, 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 the evil spirit began to speak to him. This stuff real. Yep. What those folks were describing in, 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 in Miami, these different witnesses is exactly what the Bible says they look like. It's biblical. It's yeah. biblical. <laughs> so what have we been doing? We've been teaching you and preparing you to walk in the confidence and the power of Christ because these are the things that Jesus dealt with. That lunatic man manifests. Have you come to torment us before our time? We know who thou art, O Son of God. Folk get to see in a, a face, and I'm listen, I'm talking about in the church. Starting to see a face contort, starting to hear a, a man's voice like I heard before come out of a cute little girl, just more baritone than me. Begin to speak to a little girl. I said, hold your peace and shut your mouth. I don't care about what you look like or what you sound like. Come out of her in Jesus' name. And it came out. It's time for the church to arise, to walk in the power of the risen Savior, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the truth, the power of the word of God that's been given us the power through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a statement and a question um so my statement is like how i guess i don't know if y'all know if i have an answer to this but how are how do like these spirit how are these spirits able to like manipulate like natural things um and i ask that because i remember we were shooting inside of like this mansion that was like supposedly haunted we didn't really see anything um, there was like a certain floor that was like very just like woo. so I, huh? Upstairs. It felt very thick. It felt very thick upstairs. Like, I don't know if when we all walked in, um, Jesus just put them all upstairs and just said, "Y'all better, y'all better just stay up. They don't come downstairs at all." Because we we walked up to that floor and we was like, "Ooh, we felt it." But we um. But you know that's what we prayed when we prayed for you guys. Yeah, and so um, when uh, I remember, I don't know if Oma was there or not, but. I remember I was like walking across like this huge stairwell and I looked outside of the window like straight because you look through the house and it goes like out to like the balcony to the deck and there's just a whole bunch of trees. And I saw a face in the trees. And so I wasn't scared, but I also thought I was tripping because I was like, I couldn't understand what, like I could understand what I was seeing, but I was like, am I tripping? Because I'm literally looking at this face I'm just staring at it, and at that moment, like I didn't think to like rebuke it or anything like that, because I wanted, I just didn't know if it, if I was seeing what I was seeing. So I was like, you know what? Here's the rule of thumb: rebuke first, ask questions later. Yeah, yeah. 
because I was because I was looking at it and it was looking at me. So I was like, you know what? I was like, let me see if it's still gonna be there. So I just like went forward and I came back and it was gone. And I was, and it was just like regular trees and like the like. So I was like, how was it able to? Like I didn't know if like the trees bent in some sort of way or if it was like I don't I don't I wasn't able to like fully understand because I walked past that well I, I was out there photographing the trees before and they just like looked normal so I didn't understand how like now I could see a clear face just looking at me. Right. See the thing is, is that when we think about Jesus when he and the disciples were in a ship and um, they were like <laughs> Lord care ye not that we perish so Jesus got up and Jesus rebuked the wind and spoke peace to the sea the bible says and then there was a calm so then then uh they marveled how jesus had authority over the wind and the sea but then jesus is like why do you marvel oh ye little faith so and which caused them to, i mean they were afraid when when this the whole thing was going on and so the bible said he rebuked the wind the wind and the Hebrew is ruach, which means spirit. So there was a spirit manipulating the elements. Mm -hmm. So he spoke peace to the sea because the sea was the natural. So he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the spirit controlling the wind. That's why the Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he rebuked the spirit, and then he told the, the, the natural realm to calm down. And you guys have heard and even seen how we rebuked storms and all of a sudden things got calm. We rebuked the tempest. We rebuked the spirit driving the wind. And all of a sudden it goes away. Even on the news they were saying it's going to be a hurricane. It's going to hit. A tornado is going to hit the killer right where we live. And we stood up and we said, devil, you are lie. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke you, you tempest controlling the wind. In Jesus' name. You will not destroy anything in the killer. We bind you in Jesus' name. And we watching the news. We watch it. And he said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The tornado just went away. Right as we prayed. <coughs> this stuff is real. And that's why you, you you're like even seeing those faces, they manifest in certain ways. This stuff is real. But we always have the power we have to realize it's not about them. It's about the power that's in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Go ahead. Also, oh, you had something else? Yeah, but you can go. I was going to say that we have to realize that we don't have a full understanding of, like, physics and how every matter and all how all that is, but... All of this we think is solid, right? With it's not. That's the thing. Like we're we're looking at these things as solid. There's nothing, you know, unless you have something like a drill or something, that's the only way it can be penetrated, but that's not true. And how what examples do we have? Do you know Jesus walked through the wall? Why, how is it that, you know, people in the occult can have their, um, their rituals and literally connect through a portal in the wall and connect two places to each other? It doesn't make sense logically, but literally everything that we see is was first formed spiritually so it's it's a lot more to it than we understand and that our mind can understand so uh, without getting too far into it um it's literally the scripture that says that faith is the substance of things not seen well that scripture right there is actually really loaded on what a lot of these scientists are looking for, this dark matter, how does it work? How does it, literally, the answer to a lot of things. But, and like I said, I'm not gonna get into it, but this stuff isn't really solid. 
and and we also have the an example b- back in Genesis when literally God created Adam out of the dirt. How do you how do you make a living being out of the dirt? Let me ask you this: How is it that a person, a seer, can literally see a spirit in a TV, like in a TV program, like? on the person in the TV. That's a head scratcher, but that's real. That's literally real. I see that all the time. I'll be watching somebody and a spirit will literally come out of them and I'm like, oh wow, look at that. And it'll go back in. Or it'll try to come out of whatever program, whatever movie it's attached to, try to come out of the screen into my home, absolutely not. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Go back to the dry place. You're not welcome here. You don't have, I'm not giving you uh, permission to cross through. Yeah, I had something like that similar. I didn't see it, but it was like I heard it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like on Instagram rolling through, and I I tapped onto like this artist because she was saying how like she made her music, Mm -hmm. and then she like how she like used like the sound bathing things i was like watching the video and literally when i was watching it the sound frequencies changed in my ear it almost like it tuned to a different mm-hmm. like i can i can hear it immediately so like i was like oh no and i rebuked it because I, I i don't know it's like i knew that something had changed spiritually like i was able mm-hmm. to just like hear in a different frequency and i was like oh yeah no like this is not where i'm yeah supposed to be listening at so let me just like rebuke that and it like stopped mm-hmm. well i guess my now my question is mm-hmm. like when you get woken up in the middle of the night mm-hmm. Right, because so like I get woken up in the middle of the night, but I, I ask though like, am I supposed to pray? Like I don't hear anything. Like my my spirit like doesn't feel troubled or anything. So I'm like, when you wake up in the middle of the night, uh, and if the Lord is calling you to like pray, like do you feel like Not you need to always. pray, or do you feel like troubled or like something? Not always. Not always. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta follow instructions. The Lord wake you up middle of the night, get up and pray. You already know the answer because you've been told it. That's everybody, yeah. several times. Well, sometimes, because, like, you know, a while ago, I was, like, dealing with these things in my bladder, so I would have to wake up in the middle of the night to, like, go to the bathroom so that my body could, like, be right. at peace to go back. Excuse right. So I never understood That's natural. If, yeah, so I never understood if, like, if I was, because I, I pray before, like, hey, Lord, like, wake me up in the middle of the night if I have to go so I, my body's not, like, holding it. And so right. I would wake up, so I would, mm-hmm. then I would go. So I, I didn't know, because, like, I would wake, because I would wake up recently, my body's, like, back to normal now. But I would still wake up in the middle of the night. And I was just like, I would just go to the back of my oh, thank you, Lord, and then just like end up going back to sleep or like stay up or something like that. So I didn't know if I was being woken up to pray or now that my body is like used to being woken up now. I would say, I'm telling you that with this, this time that's hour, because let me tell you something. Nowadays, the Lord, probably out of seven days a week, Maybe five days, he'll wake me up in the middle of the night, and as I start praying, I'll just be I'll just wake up. And as I start praying, he'll begin to open things up to me and begin to speak to me, and that's what he's doing. That's why see when he said, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock." Those that open the door, I come unto them and and, and fellowship with them and them with me. And he's not it's not always a, a knocking on the door. Sometimes him knocking is waking you up. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just going to uh, extend what you were saying. Well, that was a good question. Go I was just going to extend what you were saying about, like, just physics. Um, I was a bio major in school. We had to take um, a physics class, of course. Mm-hmm. And one of the um, principles, um, I forget which law it is in physics, but everything is vibrating. Everything is vibrating at a particular frequency. Mm-hmm. And if you know which frequency it's vibrating at, you can disintegrate it. Like, you can literally open something up. You can open up a wall. But it's the same thing with light. Like when you were saying about seeing things, Mm -hmm. it makes me think about like how we only can see one uh, a spectrum of wavelengths, but things outside of that wavelengths are invisible to us. And Mm -hmm. like some people can tap into that and like put on glasses, whatever it is. But it's just like it's so interesting how Mm -hmm. simple these things are and how we're taught them, but we make it also like so foreign and like far fetched. But it's like spooky (laughs) and spooky and stuff. But it's 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 even scientific. That's what I'm saying. Like it's we've all learned that. We've all learned that there's a spectrum of light. We all learned that, you know, there are different states of matter. But we kind of then be like, Oh, that can't be real because blah blah blah. But it's like, no, it's real. (laughs) But we already learned that. Right. And and what we're teaching you guys 
is to walk in the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost created all this stuff. And he will open stuff, close us, he'll show us, he'll talk to us, he'll explain it to us, he'll tell us what to do, he will empower us, he will unction us, he will stop us and say, no, don't do it. There's so many times it's, I felt his hand in my chest and I'm going to go battle with something, he'll say, no, just wait, and I'll just wait. Because I'm telling you something, we live in a three-dimensional world, but there are at least seven more dimensions and that's been proven even scientifically that we don't see or hear or touch or taste or feel. Not most times, but when we are in the spirit of God, he, he, I'm telling you, when, now I ain't talking about just dun, 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 oh my God, your wig come off or my glasses come <laughs> off. No, I'm talking about when we are walking in the Holy Spirit. When we are walking in the spirit, like in Romans says, and we're not fulfilling the lust or the desires or the emotions of the flesh. When we're walking in the spirit of God. God is able to, like the, like you, the, the scripture you just quoted, faith, uh, um, the Bible says in, in the Hebrews that God created the world by faith. By faith, we understand we create, he created by his world. The faith is a substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things unseen. Yep. So there are things that are unseen mm -hmm. that by faith and walking in the Holy Ghost, he will open us up in our eyes to see the yep. things that's unseen, to hear it or to feel it or to smell it. And, and he will unction us and let us know what it is and how to rebuke it, how to deal with it, or how to pray because what you may be seeing may be an angel. What you may be feeling may be an angel. And how to pray so that the angels could go forth and they go forth and excel in strength, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So when we prophesy, when we decree, when we rebuke, when we bind, the angels go on the mission to fulfill what the word has said through us. When we say, I bind you in the name of Jesus, we see in the book of Revelation, and I say this all the time, that the Bible said an angel came down with a chain to bind Satan for a thousand years. When we say, I bind you, be bound in Jesus' name, an angel goes and binds them. Yeah. We work, we are the host of heaven on earth. They are in the visible realm. They are the host of heaven in the invisible realm. That's why Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Heaven to heavenlies, the invisible realm. Go ahead. This is so good, and it's confirmation for me and just, like, giving me understanding of a passage I had just read in John where Jesus visited the disciples in mm -hmm. his glorified body, right. but he ate some of the fish. And mm -hmm. I was, like, wondering, like, how like you're in your glorified body but you're eating the fish with the disciples so this is uh, opening that up for me right and think about it in the old testament that's what the angels did and that's what the angel of the lord did which is christ before he was born of a, of a uh, and became jesus in the natural yeah they, they visited abraham they visited these different prophets and they ate fish and bread with them so it's literally the two melding Emerging. into one which it's it w always was but now you're just being opened up to see that it, that it is because i don't know how many times like i've seen a portal like just in the wall and or just looking at the wall and it's like that doesn't look solid like it looks like i can just walk through it i'm not gonna do it unless the lord say but i think he was showing me that just to say this stuff is not real. See, we, we live in virtual reality. The spiritual realm is the true reality because the Bible says that what we don't see is eternal, but what we do see is temporal. It's temporal. <laughs> and, that's the, and that's the answer. Your question again, Tay, about how can, you know, these spirits manipulate the natural. That's what they do. Because it first happens in the spiritual realm, then the natural realm. Right. And that's why Jesus came to make us sons of God, according to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, it says that he came that we might become sons of God. What is a son of God? Son of God represents dominion and authority and power. Because if you look at the book of, of, of Luke, the genealogy, it, it goes, it starts from Jesus. The only one that starts from Jesus and go all the way back to Adam. But when it gets to Adam, it says, Adam, the son of God. Now, the son of God, oh, Father, help me, Jesus. The, the, the son of God, it, it denotes a direct creation of God. Because Adam was 
divinely created by God himself. We as humans were procreated. When Jesus came, there was no man. So Jesus was a direct creation of God in the flesh, right? Now, why do you say he gives us power to become sons of God? Because the angels in the Old Testament were called sons of, are called sons of God. Even the fallen ones, God said in, 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 in Psalm chapter 82, write that down and read that. He said, you are, he said uh, you are all sons of God. He was talking to the angels, even the fallen ones. They start out as sons of God. Now, why would he make us sons of God? Oh, Lord, bro, you're going to like this, Julius. Watch this. Why did he go make, why, did, why, is, why is this his desire, his will for us to become sons of God? Because when we're in Christ, the Bible said we are a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. What does that have to do with being a son of God? Because now you being born again, you're not born again like on John chapter 1 of flesh and blood, but you're born by the will of the Father. And what does that mean? Now as you're born again, you are a direct creation of God the Father again. You are a son of God. And the fallen angels who were sons of God, who had power over the natural realm, power in the spiritual realm. Now that we become sons of God because Jesus is the son of God that came that we might become sons of God. And that's why he, he gives us authority over principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, power over the occultic, power over all these things in the invisible realm that can materialize in the natural realm because we too now are sons of God. He leveled the playing field, then he sets us above him because the Bible says that Jesus was set above every principality, power, ruler, throne, dominion, but the Bible also tells us that we are seated with him in heavenly places. So now we're seated with Christ. He's a, the son of God. He's over everything. Now we are sons of God. Now we have authority over over sons of God that have fallen. Mm -hmm. It's understanding who we are, understanding the power of God. That's why you can cast out a devil. That's why you can rebuke environments and atmosphere and territories. But God said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Even Paul said, let's move on from the fundamentals of the gospel repentance, baptism, all these things that are fundamental is needed for when we're based, but now it's time to move on to maturity to walk in the fullness of God, to walk in the fullness of Christ, to mature and to become one with Christ, to do the will of the Father in the earth realm. Amen. Say it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Say self, it's time to grow up. Amen. Go ahead. Got a question. So let's say if you go into somebody's house and, you know, they've dealt with like a witchcraft or something like that. What do you have the authority to go in their house and do? Well, Whatever you allow them. Right, that's or the whatever they allow you, I should say. Right. That's a good question. What, what, she, what, there? what she means is that if they allow you to pray in there to root out whatever it is, you have authority to do that. And because they gave you that place to do it. But if not, then you just be like, all right, devil, you ain't got no place here. You ain't going to touch me or bother me. And they got to stay away from you. But they, they, are, they can do whatever they want because they have permission to be there. Gotcha. Right, because the Bible says that wherever our feet tread upon, literally wherever we walk, he's given us dominion. Right. But, you know, a lot of churchgoers think that, oh, just because our ministry is here, this is, our, this is the region that the Lord has given us. Not so. Man, it's literally tree. wherever you go. Right. So he was showing me because one day he was like, look, I want you to rebuke this storm that's uh, coming from the Pacific coast. And I was like, um, I'm here in Georgia. So, but he, but he brought that scripture back up to my mind. Well, I lived in California. Not only that, I visited Oregon for a while as well. So he was showing me, so you have actually have power in that quadrant as well as the one above it. You lived in, I had you living in New York for a short while, so you also have authority in that region as well. So I was like, oh, okay, sure. So I rebuked it, and sure enough, it didn't do any damage. 
like they said it was going to. That's good. Because yeah. we had did some work at our house. And just based off, like, everything that I've been, like, learning here and um, even, like, studied on the side, too, I was, like, I'm always very watchful of things. And so I just, like, would see certain things around the house. I'm just, like, suspicious. Mm-hmm. Right. You might have to. Can somebody take them that call us, Mike? If you got to stay back, then we just give you the oh, mic. No, okay. But like what what Dante is getting at is like sometimes as we're walking through a particular house, we're like, oh, this is a nice room, but then like, what's that on the shelf over there? Or like. We see this photo, but who's that in the back of that photo? Or like, what crystals and stuff? And so, like, we had that experience on last week when we were at a house. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, like we were like walking around doing like a little walkthrough, and the first thing that I peeped was kind of seemed insignificant was an owl. And it's so, not I, significant. Significant. That's that's a sin. That's you know what I'm saying. What seemed insignificant. So right. anybody that's like walking through would see. An owl, I'm like, oh, that's oh, they got a little decoration. Yeah. So like, I seen it, and I was like, hmm, okay. Right. So then I'm walking through, and the in the lawn, they have like a little stencil thing. I see a dragon, and I was like, "Okay." So you so, know, you see. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, that's obviously something. I'm just keep on going. So I'm like, walking in like the rooms and stuff like that, and I see um, a book on goddess worship, and mm -hmm. I was like, "Well, whoop, there it is." There there it is. Then I see like the um, <laughs> then that, once I start seeing that, everything just like. I started seeing like the, I'm, the I'm different. Telling, I'm telling you guys not to cut you off. I'm mm -hmm. telling you guys, once you see this stuff, when your eyes are open, you can't unsee this stuff. Yeah. yeah. So then yeah. I was just like, witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's the it's the it's all those are symbolism of the occultic spirit. See, all those particular things is showing what has authority in that region and in that house. Yeah, because the owl means something, the dragon means something, the goddess means something. It's telling you who's given place in that territory. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. He says a wind chime thing on the door. And it was like spirits on like the time. Oh, was and a dream catcher or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, see those, let me, let me, what, what those are meant to do is open doors for demons to come through and back and forth. Those are literally doorways that is used there. Now, if you look in the book of Revelation, I got you in one sec. When you look at the book of Revelation, it says that a key was given. The uh, angel fell to the earth, and the key was given to him to open the bottomless pit. Well, these things are like keys to open the doors for the enemy to come in and come through, just like a, a Ouija board, just like what they call a spirit talking machine, where you talk with spirits through this particular transmitter, which, which, which people saw in Miami, and it opens door for spirits to come through. But go ahead. Um, so I know... Like for myself, when I was younger, like being afraid of uh, somebody breaking into my house or getting robbed or whatever, it was always so much fear. And I remember even when I came to this ministry, was still having all these dreams and stuff. But also at the same time, I was walking in fear. Like when I got out of the car, I'm like, okay, like I can't really see who's the garage. There's like a cul-de-sac. I always think, oh, somebody might be behind there. But then I have a dream that night of some, you know, something happening. And it's just like... Um, you know, recently just been realizing, like, the kingdom of God dwells in me. So it's like, if I live in the Lord, the Lord lives in me. It's legally, they don't have it. Legally, right. they can't touch me. So it's like, even when I feel, like, uh, nervous sometimes, um, you know, sitting in my bed or whatever at night when I hear things or I feel like stuff is moving in the air, it's like, you know, this is goofy. Like, the kingdom of God lives in me. But I had a question, though, because with that fear, like moving in fear and having those dreams, like, do they see in the, um, I guess I'm a Let me question. correct some. Uh -huh. You're not moving in fear, but go ahead. I'm going to explain it to you. Okay. Um, like, I guess I've heard something or uh, in the Bible, or not in the Bible, but just different preachers saying, 
like when you move and how you act like in the spiritual realm these demonic powers are seeing you and like that is what attracts the the attacks or whatever kind of like to dante's question earlier mm-hmm. but i guess just want clarification yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's well, true. well okay so this I'm trying to give you guys a picture. So, Holy Spirit, help me. Um, okay, so when I see, when I look at somebody, I can see whatever spirit is attached to that person, okay, mm-hmm. if the Lord is allowing me to see it. I'll mm-hmm. say that. So, it's not so much that these spirits, can, because they can see, of course, because mm-hmm. it's all spiritual. So they're mm-hmm. all on the same in the same dimension mm-hmm. at that point. So it's not even just that they can see it. Mm-hmm. They know the assignment that's attached to you mm-hmm. because of whatever ranking demon that is attached to you. Mm-hmm. So it's like understanding the the like if you look at a company, how the company set yeah, up like at the, the bottom. You have like the mail workers or Mm -hmm. whatever. The janitors. Right. So you know their place. They're supposed to help with the facilities and stuff like that. Well, you have the lower level demons. They torment. Mm -hmm. They, you know, do like whatever little Mm -hmm. stuff just to irritate, to keep you in bondage or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then above that, you'll have a higher ranking demon over them. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that oh, I see that you're struggling with something. They literally know Mm -hmm. what demons are assigned. So they know fear is assigned to you. Mm -hmm. So at that point, they can play off of that. Gotcha. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Right, right. I guess I think about, like, um, I've always heard, like, unclean. Mm -hmm. You have an unclean space, like, that attracts unclean spirits. Uh-huh. Well, you have un- me, well, let yeah. me say it like this. You have an unclean place because you are, an unclean spirit is already tied to you. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Got you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any other questions? Or no, that was good. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so here's the thing about the fear that just because you feel fear don't mean that you're afraid. Like my wife was saying earlier, these spirits have a certain essence to them. And the spirit of fear, its job is to produce fear. Just like the spirit of jealousy, its job is to produce jealousy. So when you feel fear, it doesn't mean you're afraid. It's just fear trying to invade you and want to be attached to you. It wants to be attached to you to eventually jump in you. Yeah. So when you feel fear, you just rebuke fear. Fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Then you quit quote the word of God like she was like she was saying earlier. God is not giving me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Because when we're fearful, we can't think straight. Yes. And, and, we, and we're going to get into some scripture about that in a and minute. Intimidation is their absolute number one tactic. Right. So you will feel uh, intimidated at first. But the more that you just know, I'm just going to do what, uh, the instruction I was given. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You, you have to leave. Go now. In Jesus name and you stick to it you'll notice that and and I know for me especially because fear was a huge thing even for me like I was terrified like I wouldn't even watch a scary movie I don't like I don't like any of that but um, when I rebuke the spirit of fear then that fe- that overwhelming feeling of fear would immediately leave and so then it was just me and these other demons just face to face and so then I was like, oh, okay, well, that's weird. I don't feel anything. But now I can follow the instruction without my emotions getting distracted. Right, right, right. But that is the number one thing. They will try to intimidate, hands down. Right, because they tyrants, they bullies. Bullies try to intimidate you. Yeah. Sorry, here's my last question. Mm-hmm. No, um, you're fine. Look, don't, don't apologize. Listen. Yeah, we want to answer all questions. You know guys. why we have this set up like this? God said my people de- are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So it's not what we know, it's what we don't know that can destroy us. Mm-hmm. But then Paul said, for we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So this is to get understanding because if he said if we're ignorant of his de- devices, he can get advantage of us. So we don't want the devil getting advantage of anybody because we all of us in here 
have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost lives inside of us. And unless we're able to understand by the knowledge of truth how to walk in that, the, 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 the spirit of the living God, then we learn how to walk in the character of God. Then we know how to learn how to walk in the authority and the power of God. Go ahead. So I was, so my question was with like places like haunted houses. Is it the houses that haunt it or are they just tormenting the people? I know the demons can possess a house or even objects in order to, in order to uh, control people or to gain territory, territory and, and even to uh, oppress or possess people. Because I was thinking, like, even though when we went to like that thing that was everybody's call, it was like the haunted house or the most haunted place or whatever, even in, even in our like hotel that was supposedly like the most haunted place in New York City, it didn't necessarily like I mean I know I just I know I couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know I was hearing stuff, but I was also like in New York, so it was just like I feel like you're just gonna hear stuff all the time. Yeah. So I didn't so when even when being there, it was like I didn't feel like it was haunted. So I didn't know if it was like because it I guess it didn't have any ties to me that I didn't necessarily like feel. Yeah. Like the place was haunted, even well, though. I, I'll I'll say this, and I, I'm, this is not like a definite, but I believe that a lot of these places are probably just near an earth gate or a portal or something, mm. and you have to look at it like it's like a subway. Okay, gotcha. so you've got the different lines of the the track that these the the sub the what is it the train cars mm-hmm. move on, right? But you have certain spots stations stations where the people get on and off that's how it is at these spots where there are portals it's not just there's portals everywhere yeah. there's certain spots where there is a door specifically to be opened and closed mm-hmm. now of course the enemy perverts this and they would d- use it to open it to transport these spirits um, because they don't just appear out of nowhere all willy-nilly. They have to be summoned. That's why you have witches and warlocks. Mm-hmm. But they travel through that type of system, subway system or ley lines, which lets out at a specific portal. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was something close by there that, because again, just like we talked about with the physics, you're talking about sound, you're talking about light, and you're talking about um, um, movement. Mm. So if there's a lot of activity, it's, it's prime for them to do their rituals and summon these spirits gotcha. to, to come. That's um, just like Stonehenge. Like There's reasons why these places are where they are. It's not just coincidence or happenstance. That makes sense. Yeah, because I was like, because I was wondering, because I mean, we, there were stories of people like on Sedessa, like they heard stuff or whatever. And, you know, like there was a point where I was like, Lord, I want to see something. <laughs> so I would like, I would like go outside the house. I would look at, I would look at all the windows. I want to see a thing. I went in the basement, mm-hmm. deep in, with people. Didn't see, got in trouble. Still didn't see anything. So I was like, but I, and the only thing I did see was out like far from the house. Well, I saw things in the pictures. You yeah, you see so. things. Let me, let me explain. Let me, I want, can I open this up to you guys? Can, can I explain this so you guys can see and understand what happened? See, if, if you remember, Marty, when we prayed for you guys, we prayed that the angels would be with you and they would push every evil spirit to a certain part of the house that it can't get to you, right? So then you say you couldn't, you tried to go upstairs and couldn't, you felt that it was heavy up there because that was their line. They couldn't cross that while you were there. And to cross that line would be transgressing the line and breaking the hedge. Now, here's the picture. What happens is you have angels with you, even though you can't see them everywhere you go. So what happened is, I'm going to let you say something about this. But when you, well, what happened was when you guys walked into the house, the angels was with you. You guys was covered in light, and those demons saw it, those evil spirits saw it, and the angels pushed them into where they had, they were assigned to be while you were there. 
because you have authority. You are king's kids. That's why if the president or the president kids or the king or queen kids go into a place, the CIA goes out or the police or whatever goes out to clear it out before you get there. So right. you can't pass this line because royalty is coming. You are royalty. Secondly, let me say this, that they can't transgress that place and the spirit that you saw in the trees was looking at you because it was assigned to the trees even though it's normally in the house. Mm, that makes sense. It's normally in the house. So it's looking at you, staring you down. But then when he's looking at you, he's seeing them angels stand next to you. He see the glory of God on you. If we can only see what we have, what, who we are, if we can only see, if we can get beyond this mind, the fear, the insecurity, the rejection, the, the feelings and all that stuff and begin to walk in the spirit. It's times when people are talking. I can see the Holy Ghost is glowing on them. Me too, yeah, same. We have to understand that thing. We, listen, the, Jesus said this, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Which means, again, Paul said that we are ambassadors of Christ. What's an ambassador? Ambassador is somebody that belongs to another city, another government, another country, another civilization that visits a place, and the laws of that place don't apply. The, these spiritual laws don't apply to us because we were sent into the world, Jesus said. Even as the Father sent me, so I send you. So now we are ambassadors of Christ, right? That's why I turn my house into an embassy. That's why when people come over my house, they fall asleep. Don't they? Yeah. The peace of God, because the, the Spirit of God hovers in our house. And doves stay in our lawn. Right. So we have the spirit of God that 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 stays there, that that uh, that, you know, when the enemy comes to try to attack, because he does try to get in. One particular night. Something crashed against the, the wall, woke my wife up, then a light shone through the wall. Right. The window. The window. And, and heard something. But what happened was the enemy was trying to attack us because this happens. And the angel slammed his tail against the wall. And the, the, he slammed it so the angel light shined so brightly through the window. And it had to go. Listen, there's more with us than against us, saints. When Elijah, Elisha and his servant was surrounded by the army, Elisha's servant went out and saw the chariots and the armies. And he came in and said, Elisha, care not that we perish. Same thing, fear faithlessness but then Elisha said Lord open his eyes that he might see and then when he opened the servant's eyes he saw angels surrounding the enemy in chariots of fire with light with power with glory ready to take the enemy out and then Elijah Elisha said to him there are more for us than are against us that's what we have to understand because listen if we fear what we see what we feel what the enemy's trying to make us think what we do is we neutralize the power and the strength of the angelic hosts because they they move by faith yeah. our faith in christ not talking to them not talking to the angels but our faith in christ praying decreeing declaring they they hearken unto the voice of his word they hearken to us quoting the word and they move forward to do what the word says on our behalf so if we can own if you only if you only if you only know who you are in christ that's why even the disciples came back rejoicing saying the devils are subject to us in your name you're talking about entities entities that have been on this earth for thousands of years entities are subject to you in his name not fear in his name faith in his name like at the gate called beautiful when the when when peter and i believe it, philip healed the crippled man at the gate called beautiful jesus said why i mean uh, peter said why y'all looking at us as if we've done this great thing but it's the name of jesus and faith in his name this man is healed so it's faith in his name it's the name of jesus and faith in his name go ahead um so I was going to go back to like the mansion again. Cause I, did you go in the third level? So I, so I, I, we all had took like a tour the first day, and I remember like going to like the third the third level, 
and I remember like thinking to myself, like I felt comfortable since everybody was going. And so I don't know, I don't know if this is right or not. What I did, but like I remember just thinking, like oh, I felt more comfortable like going with everybody else, you know. Then I was like, uh, I guess I wanted to prove to myself that I wasn't scared. So I went to like a whole the whole other side by myself and just like walked through the rooms and stuff like that. And like I felt I felt fear like coming, like, okay. Like they might close the door on you in here or something like that. But I was just like I just kept on walking and kept on like going through. But there was um one specific area that I felt like a uh turn around. Right. And everybody felt that like I don't even think I don't think like the bathroom like nobody went into like that stall area, like you could like it was like it was like a, there was like a force field outside the door. Can you imagine a bunch of demons all crammed in a little room and can't get out? Right, and mine just like stalls, like stalls, and s- yeah, no, it was like it was <laughs> stalled. It was it was like probably because the, the top house was a thing that like was untouched probably since I don't know when, and so. um yeah, like everybody was just sitting there, all like on the edge of that door, just like looking in, like, oh no. <laughs> and so then this lady had took a picture. She was like, yeah, I went upstairs with myself, just like trying to take a picture. But I had started running in the middle of taking the picture, so all you see is like it's just blurry, like this blurry <laughs> photo of like the bathroom. And I was like, I, and I was wondering like if all the spirits were like just they stuck them into like that bathroom area, and that's why he was also like, look, don't go in. Mm-mm. And even the prince of that of that place wasn't even allowed in the house. That's what you saw through them trees. See, this stuff is so real. This I'm telling you. And and that's and this is this is stuff that we've been training and equipping and preparing you guys for. Fear not. I'm gonna read something to you. I'm gonna get into this word now. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, this is good. Because we, the, everything that we're saying is word, but it's experiences and examples of how to deal with it based on what the word of God says. Go ahead. I just wanted to share, if anybody noticed that everything you're talking about with the mansion, it's literally how it is in Christ. Like I remember growing up in the Lord and you read the Old Testament and he says, don't eat this. Don't go here. Don't do that. Don't do this. You'd be like, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing. But everything, ever since he told Adam and Eve, don't eat of that tree, everything has not been to lord over us, but to protect us. And I just want to say that because if you notice, all all of this is is obedience. You don't have to understand because I know we were talking the other day and just all of the things the Lord has been doing and opening up, even since 2024 started. Like it is mind blowing. And it all came down to obedience amen you did what he wanted you to do you went where he told you to go you didn't go where he told you not to go and we make it so deep and it's like just don't go to the third floor (laughs) right just uh you know because you would tell me i mean you tell me stuff all the time and i'm just like that don't make no doggone sense and it just and it'd be simple stuff it'd be so simple but if you notice Anything that causes a resistance, especially to something so innocuous, like simple instructions, like fill up the soap, (laughs) wash your hands, (laughs) go to work, (laughs) you know, just simple stuff. There is something preventing you from walking in obedience. There's something preventing you from receiving a promise of God. And we be like, well, why, you know, doing the finances? Why is that? Why is picking up trash? Why is cleaning the bathrooms? Why is going to work? Why is doing this? Why, why, why? You will not find out until the bag drop. And and then the Lord be like, you remember, because you did this little stuff. It's not big stuff. So I just wanted to share that because sometimes I think it makes it so hard for us to do things. And it's like, why is it hard? It's not. But it's something preventing us. Right, so. right, right. That's what Jesus said. You're faithful a little, you're being made rule over much. All right, let's get into this. Uh, I know at the Bible study before last, we stopped at 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 1. Turn back there. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. And and this very first sentence, this very first scripture, is the reason why we're doing what we're doing. It says, now we, now we, me and my wife, brethren, 
we beseech you by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that important? Is that important? And by the gathering, about our gathering together unto him. So that's gathering together unto him when he comes and when he go, we're caught up in the sky. But while we're on his earth, we gather together unto Christ for the purpose and the will of the Father. He said that you be not soon shaken. That you be not soon shaken. That word soon is to to kios, I mean to kios, yeah, to kios. It means briefly, that you won't even be briefly shaken. Whether it's in time, you won't be quickly shaken, speedily shaken in any manner. That you won't be shaken, something happened, you so you scared all of a sudden, so quick, quickly shaken. Or shortly shaken, it won't take long for you to get shaken. Or suddenly shaken. That ye be not soon shaken in your mind. See, God don't want us to be fearful. He doesn't want us to be shaken in our mind. Not quickly, not suddenly, not, not, uh, not hastily, not shortly. It don't take much to shake. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Like, like it, was, it, was, it was stated today, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and what? A sound what? Mind. That we would not be soon shaken in mind because the power of Christ's love in us and our, the power of our love in Christ. That he's with us always. He said, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. He said, I'm with you. Look at somebody and say, fear not. Fear not. See, see, what this word is doing is, what this word is doing is, the word is like, the Bible says the word of God comes down like a hammer, dashing into pieces. So every part of fear, every particle of fear, every stronghold of fear, every chain of fear is being hit by the word of God and is breaking into pieces, Right? So the word of God be renewed in the spirit of your mind by the washing, by the water, by the word. So then as the word come down and break into pieces, then the word becomes the water to wash those pieces away. To wash away the residue of fear. But he that has an ear, let them hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Now it says here, don't be shaken in your mind or be troubled. The word troubled is thoro. Thoro in the Greek, it means to cry aloud. You know how you, you, you know how something happens, you get so scared, you ah! That's what that means. Mm -hmm. Don't be troubled. Don't cry aloud. Don't make a noise by outcry. To be frightened or alarmed. He said, don't be alarmed. If, if something happened and you see something, don't go, ah! Don't be alarmed. Don't be shaken. Don't be troubled. Neither, now this is very, this is very interesting. Y'all reading with me? Neither by what? Spirit. Why would he say, don't be troubled, don't be alarmed, don't be shaken, even by spirit? Because this stuff is real. I remember when I was little growing up, and I was just so afraid. I would wake up in the middle of the night, a demon would be riding my back, like choking me. And I'd be running through the house screaming, get on my back, get on my back, get on my back. Soon shaking. I didn't know. No one taught me. I remember one time I was sleeping in a bump bed. I was on the top bump, and I opened my eyes, and I saw this grotesque-looking thing had a nose of a pig. Scared the crap out of me. I experienced that um, sleep paralysis one time. But at that time, I was, I was mature in the spirit. And I got a righteous ignition. I said, how dare you touch me? I belong to Jesus. Don't you ever touch me again. Never had it ever again. Not ever. And that was when I lived in Philly. I've been here over 20 years. 
What am I saying? God don't want us to be soon shaken, easily shaken, suddenly shaken. He wants us, our faith, our, our belief, our strength, our authority and power to be grounded in him. And don't be troubled by spirit. Don't be troubled by a spirit. Watch this, y'all ready? Yeah. Know by word. You know what that means? Don't even be troubled by what's being said. Don't be in trouble by, don't be troubled by what the enemy trying to say. Don't be, in tr don't be troubled by what folk trying to say about you. Don't be troubled about what's said. Don't be troubled by what the news says. Don't be troubled. And watch this. Y'all ready for this? Know it by letter as from us. In other words, we up here giving truth. Don't be afraid of what we're saying. Don't be troubled by what we're saying. Don't be soon shaken by what we're saying, by these testimonies. If you are, just say, I rebuke you fear in Jesus' name. This is nothing to fear. I've seen, I've seen demons. I've seen angels. I've seen Jesus. I've seen the Father. I've seen, listen, if I just talk about the angels that's with me now, the angels that I've seen, the angels that talk with me, ain't no reason for me to be afraid of anything. That ain't even talking about God himself that's with me. You always got to remember this one truth. You hear me, Alex? That the angels that are with you are the ones that kick Satan and heavenly and, and fallen angels out of, out of the heavenly realm. You got the winners rolling with you. You got the winners rocking with you. You got the winners upholding you. They got your back. They got our back. There's no need for us to fear. Amen. So don't even, don't even be afraid by what you hear from us today. Because what we're telling you, what we're teaching you is how to overcome. Not just in your life, but that you can, if you're, people are so messed up everywhere that you can minister freedom to them by Christ Jesus our Lord, the one who made us free. So then, so then it says, as that the, the day of the Lord is at hand. See, we got to take this thing seriously because the day of Jesus coming back is at hand. We don't know if it's going to be five days, five months, five years. We don't know. We don't, we don't know. But I know, I know in my spirit, I know, I know by the word of God and the signs in the word of God. And the Lord said it's going to happen. All this stuff is happening. He's coming soon. The day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let anybody deceive you by any means. For that shall that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Before Jesus comes, we're seeing a lot of folks falling away. We're seeing big churches and ministries falling away. We're seeing big names falling away because it's the intent of the heart, not the number of the people. It's the intent of the heart, not the number in the bank account. It's the intent of the heart, not the number of the houses or the cars. It's the intent of the heart for Jesus that matters. Are we here to do the will of God? Yeah. That's what we got to answer for ourselves. Am I here to do the will of God? Or am I here, am I just going to church? Or am I here just to, just to you know, just to do what I want and, and feel better because I want the church? Or, or am I here just because I got a lot of money to get more money to do this? Why are we here? Jesus said, I am here to do the will of my Father and to finish his work. What did he say about us? As the Father sent me into the world, so I said, you are here to do the will of God. And yes, doing the will of God, you will be blessed. He will give you peace. He will give you health. He will give you prosperity. Excuse me. And of course, the enemy will try to hit us here and there because we are in a warfare. He'll try to weaken or lessen our faith. Stand firm in the God who keeps us who loved us and gave himself for us. Stand firm in Christ. Because we, like, again, this is preparing you for what's to come. Not what was, but what is to come. 
The Bible even said about the beast. Revelation even said about the beast that came out of bottomless pit. He was, was not, but will be again. See, we've been preparing everybody for what will be again. I'm going to break some stuff down to you. So, except for falling away come first, and that man of sin be revealed, even the son of perdition, called the Antichrist. But we, even though the Antichrist himself has not yet been fully revealed, but the spirit of Antichrist is in the world. There are spirits of Antichrist that are setting things up for the Antichrist. And if we operate in opposition to the word of God, of love, of peace of God, of being on a one accord, then we're operating by a spirit of Antichrist. For by Paul wrote, for many Antichrists have gone out into the world. Yeah, it's anything, really, oh, excuse me, anything that comes up against the will of God is the spirit of Antichrist. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say. Anything opposing his will, his word, it's anti-him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Luke 21, 24. Holy Spirit, help us in Jesus' name. Matthew 21, 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the, name, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's where we are now. That's why, uh, you know, Hezbollah and, you know, these other, um, the Muslim Brotherhood attacked Israel. The Palestinian, the war and all that kind of stuff. We already broke that down through scripture and what all that stuff meant. But this is all the, these are the times that we're living in. Then it says, and there shall be signs in the sun, signs in the sun, which, which are happening, and in the moon which are happening, and in the stars which are happening. And the thing about the stars, did y'all know that they, they say stars is nothing but gases or whatever? Do you know what stars really are? It's not gases of light. Stars are literally in the sky that gives light, are literally objects that what happens is they pulsate with sound. They pulsate, they make rhythm. That's why you look at the book of Job, it says, let the stars glorify him. All the stars has a noise. It has all the stars has worship. They work. I'm telling you, it's like it's like they they the the way the scientists uh uh how they showed it was they had the speaker like a drum and they were playing music through it. And they were they was playing it based upon what they were getting from one of the stars. And they put sand on it and it was forming all kinds of shapes through the through the through the music coming through the speakers. The stars are alive. Some of them are fallen angels or angels, some of them are not. But that's a different story for another day. Now, the moon and the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations. So, so many nations are distressed today. Do you know that Japan just got hit with another tsunami and earthquake? Distress of nations. You don't think this nation is distressed? This nation is so very distressed. But guess what? I'm not distressed. It's just like that haunted house, son. When you got the presence of the Lord with you, it's hell breaking loose all around you. But you walk through that hell with the power and authority in Christ, your faith in Christ, to rescue people that's going to hell. To bring, to snatch them out of the fire. It's his grace. It's his grace. And then it says here, upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. We're going to talk about that perplexity. And the sea and the waves roaring. So we talk about these tsunamis. So we got, we got nations in distress with perplexity. Then you got the sea and the waves roaring. We talk about these tsunamis and all this stuff. Men's hearts failing them for fear, looking for, looking for, I mean, and, and for looking after those things which are coming up coming on the earth. So there are things coming on 
the earth. And men's heart are filling them for fear. Folks are being so perplexed. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to let you go ahead because I'm going to get into something. Okay. Now, I was just going to say like that. It's confirmation because the Lord has been like encouraging me with, I forgot what the scripture is, but he was basically saying like, if you're my child, you're safe. Like you have nothing to worry about. Even right. in the midst of chaos, when all this stuff is going on, you're going to still be good. Because I, mean, I, I would have these thoughts like, dang, like I live directly in the city of the, like, the heart of Atlanta. You know, a lot For of times, and a lot of times, like people, when they attack like different cities where there's like terrorists or whatever, mm -hmm. they hit the heart of where that city is. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Lord, I'm like, hop, skip, and a jump. And he just always reminds me, like, you have no reason to fear, right? Because mm -hmm. he's with you, he's right? With you. And he's placed you exactly where he wants you to be. So I mean, we because we got so much confirmation as to him wanting you to be in that place. It, you know what I mean? So it's not like you just picked a place and it's like, well, this is what I want. No, your steps are ordered. And so even just like with, you know, Apostle talking about how when we were uh, when we were in Decula, that was the Lord ordering our steps. We didn't necessarily want to move there. <laughs> But he opened the door up for us to go there, not just to have a place to live, but so that we could make an effect in that region. Because I don't know how many other people were in that area or even in that subdivision that were praying against those tornadoes. You know, we don't know. But the Lord puts us where he wants us to be for a specific reason. And right. it's it's us getting to a point of maturity to no longer be so self-indulged in ourselves and to say, Lord, why do you have me here? What do you want me to pray as I'm up at night? You know, maybe not for here, but for wherever, whatever you're putting on my heart to pray is for a purpose. Amen. So um, I say that to say that even if, you know, that is a thought of something happening. Well, every time I get a thought of something happening, even down to seeing a car wreck or somebody trying or, you know, driving crazy and hitting us. Absolutely not. I come against that in Jesus name. I bind and rebuke that Lord cover them. Whoever's driving crazy, cover them, Lord, in Jesus name. Why have a purpose? Wherever you go, even if you're covering that person that's driving crazy next to you, that keeps swerving, maybe they're falling asleep, maybe, you know, whatever, Cover, you know, intercede for them, pray for them. And just same thing about where you are, where you're living, because you have no idea the effect that you can have in the area that you're in. Right. And we've seen that firsthand. You know, the Lord really showing us, like, this is beyond just praying for protection around your house. It goes beyond that. If if you allow him to, through you, through that faith. Amen. And it's even better when you have someone to link up with. Because one will put 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000 to flight. We get you. Who knows how much more we link up all together and pray and intercede in this region, and we will see a difference. Amen. Amen. And, and that's why we got to understand that God puts us in a certain place for a reason for, for a particular season because there is so much distress all around us. And if he said, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their own wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will, you know, uh, somebody help me, hear from heaven. He said, heal their so land. Something else, and heal their land. I will hear from heaven. I don't remember the first part. Something that heal their land. I, I don't know why I came from. Yeah, thank you. Somebody has to probably look it up for me. I don't believe it's eluding me. I will. Hear from heaven. Something to heal their lands. But that's what's so important that interceding and praying for, for, for around your family, praying for the family. Certainly, please pray for us. Amen. We're on front lines. Straight up. So, and so it says, men's fear 
failing them. So a lot of things that are happening now, folks' heart are failing them because of fear for what's coming upon the earth. Then, he, then, then let, me show you, let me show you how all this is before the rapture. Look of, looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So we talk about the powers, principalities and powers. The powers, the, these demonic forces in the heavens are being shaken right now. Thank you. If my people are, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from They're their wicked, wicked ways, ways then uh, I will hear from, from heaven, heaven and will forgive give their, their sins and, and heal their, their lands. lands. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, Thank that's you. Uh, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Thank you. Thank you. So we're seeing that it's the sun, the signs in heaven, and in the moon, and and the stars. That we see distress upon the earth and perplexity. I'm talking about perplexity in a minute. Even the seas and the waves roaring. Men's heart fell them for fear. And watch this. And for looking after. So they seeing something. Some things which are coming on the earth. There are things coming on the earth. That are causing people's heart to melt with fear. But God tells us to fear not. Because whatever's coming on the earth. We have power over it. He's with us. The heavenly host is with us. And watch this. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud and in the power of great glory. Then shall they, then, then, then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud. Talking about we, that's when we're going to meet him in a cloud with great power and glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, when these things begin to happen, then look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draws not. In other words, that's the rapture, his redemption, our redemption draw. then the rapture. But what's going to happen before the rapture? It's going to be the stress of nations with complexity. Now let me, I don't know if you guys remember the dream I had probably last year sometime where when I went to sleep, the Lord allowed me to or bless me to see how things will look on the earth after the rapture. And after the rapture, I saw the sky. And the sky looked like it was dead. It was gray. It looked like skin was kind of falling. It, it just didn't look real, but it was real. I saw stuff flying, not human, not human craft. I saw stuff flying like ancient stone type vehicles flying through the sky. There were beasts. There were creatures that were walking the earth. Everybody was hiding from screaming and running. And, and, and one guy slid under the car, so I slid under the car. And a car was like, the thing to step on a car, and the car was like, doom, it would go down. There were hell, there was things, that it was doing the trumpets that was falling, or, the, or during the wrath of God, it was falling to the earth. Oh, hell? Hell, yeah. All, I mean, it was just, it was, I was so terrified. But I was watching. None of this stuff hurt me, but it was hurting so many people, but it didn't hurt me. But I was terrified just watching it. And I was so perplexed at these things that I was seeing in the earth. I was so perplexed. How can this be real? Yeah. This is a dream. I'm interested in a dream. And, and you guys go back on YouTube and, and watch it again. I was, I'm telling you, I'm looking at things, these, these creatures. I'm looking at these things flying in the air. I'm looking at people running and screaming and hiding and all that stuff. I'm looking at, and I am so perplexed about what's happening. And a lot of perplexing things, a lot of things that are happening in the world that are causing people's heart to melt them with fear, there's bringing so much perplexity upon people. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm talking about these entities manifesting. There's the other videos of entities manifesting in Brazil on the mountain. There's so many things that's happening. 
all this occultic stuff, people getting possessed and doing all this crazy stuff, going up walls and stuff like that. If you ever see anything, listen, I'm preparing y'all for what's to come. Don't get fearful. Don't get shaken. Don't even be surprised or amazed because that's what they want to do. One time I was casting the devil out of somebody, and they hand, they laying flat on, the st on their stomach, on the, on the ground, their hands in the air like this behind them, so their hair was, hands was in the air, and they slide on their belly, like moving like a snake, not pushing themselves, literally sliding they like this all across the floor trying to get away from me like a snake. Not, not pushing with their feet, their feet are like this, their hands are like this, and their belly, they, they literally moving across the floor in their belly. And I stopped them. And I said, I bind you in Jesus' name. That spirit looked at me and said, I hate you. I said, I don't care. I love my sister. Come out of her in Jesus' name. And it began to come out of her. Don't be perplexed. Don't be soon shaken. The power of God is in you. Yeah, we're telling you these things because um, it is real and um, it is perplexing to see some of this stuff <laughs> firsthand. But um, we have to remember what we've been taught. Uh, so that that is what will help us in these situations. It's not going to help to panic or to, you know, just sit and watch it. That was me a long time. I was like, what the heck is that? Just watching it. Well, rebuke it. Right. <laughs> Tell and, it to leave. And that doesn't always mean that you're going to see it, but you're going to see how it's affecting people. And the Holy Spirit will communicate with your heart. Say, that's, this is what's going to so you rebuke it in Jesus' name. You are soldiers of Christ. A lot of folks are not getting this stuff. A lot of folks are hungry for this stuff. God has you here. God has you watching because there's a calling on you to walk in a greater place, to walk in a greater dimension, to go into deeper depths in Christ and higher heights in the realm of the spirit in order to save many souls alive. Amen. Amen. Matthew 24, 36. Matthew 24, 36. But of that day, of our redemption, drawing on him coming. Of that day and hour, no, if no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So how it was in the days of Noah is how it's going to be in the end times before the Son of Man comes, before Jesus comes. And it says, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the, to the ark. So can I ask you a question, Jalen? What's so unusual about people eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage? Why would Jesus even mention that? Because he's not talking about people. He's talking about fallen angels that came here eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. And that's where we get the giants or the Nephilim from. We'll talk about that in a minute. So it says here, you listening to me, Marty? So then he says here, for then two shall be in the field and one shall be taken and the other one left. Two women shall be grinding in the mill and one will be taken and the other one left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. So we're going to see all this stuff happening. But be, always be ready. Don't be living a life of sin. Saying, oh, he's going to come tomorrow. He'll come that very moment. You don't know. They will be left here. Because he said, as the days of Noah, he said, I'm, I'm not telling you the day or the hour. He said, but I'm going to tell you what to look for before I come. It's going to be like the, the days of Noah. Now, what happened in the days of Noah? Turn to Genesis chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 1. The days of Noah. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw women, that they were very fair, and took them as wives. That's where he's talking about eating, giving in marriage, 
and marrying and giving in marriage. So these fallen angels, the sons of God, Ben Elohim, which means the angels, they, they, they uh, saw that these women were beautiful. And they took them and made them wives. And then the Bible tells us there were giants in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and they brought forth giants, children who were giants because the growth inhibitor genes are in the men. So these angels, they're copulating with women, and there's no growth inhibitor gene in them. So these babies grew up to be giants. And they're fossilized giant's bones that were found, old newspaper clippings. They're still being found all over the world. The Smithsonian, the governments are trying to cover it up because it, it, it debunks their theory of evolution, their Darwinism. It crashes that to pieces and shows that it's not true. So the fallen angels are the ones that slept with the daughters of men, that made these giants in the, in the Hebrews called Nephilim or Nephilim plural, these hybrid, which means hybrids, which means fallen ones, which means tyrants, which 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 means um, the you know, evil ones. These 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 things that were birthed from the women, from the fallen angels, were evil ones because they didn't have a soul. God gave us a living soul, so they don't have they just body and spirit. And because they came from an evil spirit, they just pure evil. It's no hope for them because they just want to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's and so when the giants die, when the Nephilims that did die in the flood, and after that when David and, and, and Joshua, Caleb, and the boys and the mighty men of valor was killing these giants, they dispersed throughout the world. That's why they have fossilized bones in Ireland, here in the United States, at Grand Canyon, so many different places here in the United States, and England, and all these parts around the world, especially where you find these stone hinges at and all that kind of stuff. These are entities that have died, and the, the, because they were, they were Nephilim, they were hybrids, they died. God said in the book of Enoch, I encourage everybody to read the book of Enoch, because it was part of the original canon of the Bible, but it was removed. But it's still in the Ethiopian Orthodox canon, and there's still a couple other canons in, that's floating around in a, a, other faraway countries that is still part of the canon. It was taken out of the King James Version after the 1611 version, the year 1611, when it was first written, then it was rewritten by Cambridge, folks in Cambridge that are associated with the one percenters, that are associated with those who run the world, that removed everything about the giants that was in the Bible, that showed why it happened and all those things. So even in the book of Enoch, it said this book is for those who are at the end. That's what Enoch wrote. So here's the thing here. So when... The Nephilim, or these giants, those that died, they became evil spirits. And that's what Jesus cast out. That's what we cast out, right? But then when you look at the Mayan world, they used to say that there were star people that would come down out of the heavenlies to their abode. So all of the Nephilim didn't die. So all yeah. of them didn't die. I, I just want to also interject that they are also the ones where most movies, most TV shows are alluding to right. dead people, okay? Because they, you have to remember, they're half human, half angel. So some of them do look like people. Some of them, they mated with animals, so they look um, half, you know, human, half animal. Like the minotaurs and all that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But they, but, you know, they are able, some of them are able to change their appearance. So I'm just saying all of that to say that the narrative from the world is, oh, they're just, you know, maybe one of your ancestors. Why don't you talk to them? Absolutely not. I'm not talking to no Nephilim. I'm not doing it. I'm not giving them entrance into my life. Right, which are now demons. Right, to become my God in place of the Holy Spirit, because that's, that's all they want. They want to take the place of the Holy Spirit so that they can then control and rule our lives. Right. And right. live again because they were once living here. Right. So in some aspects, they are ancestral, not mine. Right. And these fallen angels are not demons. Fallen angels are the principalities 
that Paul said we wrestle with. Excuse me, the powers, the rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, those are different levels of demonic forces. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, I'm telling you this, I'm teaching, go study it for yourself. These, the women that slept with the angels and bore these giants are now called sirens. That's where you get the goddesses from, that's where you get mermaids from, and all that kind of species that, that, of women that slept with the fallen angels, they were cursed to be sirens. So even in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about these women with stork wings. They're not angels, they're sirens. So we see all these different, these different creatures that came forth, like my wife said, the angels manipulating the flesh, manipulating animals' genomes, human genomes, mixing and splicing different creatures together. That's why you have all these different type of creatures in mythology. You got the Medusa, you got all these titans and these giants. These things used to be real because they were depicted in history in different civilizations that don't even know each other. Men's heart will fail them for fear after looking after those things which will come upon the earth. This stuff is coming back, y'all. And when we're praying, I'm praying, boys, before Jesus, it's after Jesus come back. But there seem to be some things slipping through. Slipping through. Like I said last week, and, 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 and folk, go, go research this yourself. Think what you want. This stuff real. Right. I know what I've seen. I know what I experienced. And I know what God took me to see. And I, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that even last week, it's all over different news outlets. A UFO over top of Air Force One with Biden in it. These things are becoming more and more prevalent. Why? Because these things are beginning to come forth and reveal themselves. They want the earth and they want us and they want either to enslave us or kill us. But Jesus came to give us power over all of them because we're no longer sold under sin. Jesus washed away our sin. We were born again, we are new creatures. In other words, we're sons of God, and we're here with the power and the glory of Christ to preach the gospel, to set folk free, and to bring condemnation to the adversary. Go ahead, sweetheart. I was gonna say that, um, of course there's a select few that have been imprisoned and chained, right. and will be released at a certain time. Um, however, most of these guys, like, they, they're they bound to the earth, these Nephilim. So they're, they're not just all in one place, or they're among us all the time. It's just like you were saying, we only see in a certain spectrum of light, so we can't see beyond this dimension, most of us, but that doesn't mean that they aren't there <laughs> around. I was like, look at yourself. You are body, soul, and spirit. Can you see your spirit? Can you see your soul? Some people can. I can. So I'm seeing that it's not just my physical hand, but it's literally all three, but not in this dimension. I'm just seeing in different dimensions at once. So we're literally, this isn't, um, I'm just saying like, this isn't like new or like now they're invading like aliens. No, they've always been around. That thought that comes out of nowhere that you should do something or you are a certain way when you're not that's them. Right. And they are not aliens. People call them aliens, but they are what they are are they are demons. They are demons. They are Nephilim and they are demons. Right. So for the most part, we're equipping you for what you cannot see, but what is actually present. Right. Right. You know the Bible says that uh, God is going to destroy the earth and the heavens and roll them up like a garment and throw them into the fire. Why? Just like the Mayan people said, they star people that live among the stars. 
Well, these were Nephilim that survived the flood because if you read it, it said that they were in the before the flood and afterwards. Some of them got away, and they escaped the flood. And these star people, these light people from the Mayans and different other ancient civilizations were describing them and the ships that they were flying in, they are real. They are real. I actually, on my other phone, which happened to just stop working after I recorded, I recorded a UFO. I literally recorded it. It was a silver, huge silver sphere going across the sky. And I showed my wife, I showed quite a few people. And then about a few days later, my phone just died. I had to get a new phone, it was gone. So this stuff is real. But the thing about it is, don't be deceived. They are, they are not, in, they're not uh, aliens. Extraterrestrial. They're not extraterrestrial, they're interdimensional. Yeah. That's my wife was talking about dimension. One day, when a little while after my wife and I met, maybe a couple of years, uh, I was sitting in my house. We had, was having Bible study, and I used to always wear baseball caps. And I felt something on the side of my head, but I looked, my cap was on the arm of the chair where I left it. But I feel like I got a hat on. I'm like, man, what is this? And I, you know, I ain't go feel it because I looked at my hat. I'm like, why am I feeling this on the side of my head? And then back then she said, uh, Apostle, you're going to think I'm crazy. I said, no, what? She said, I see a crown on your head, and it's tilted sideways on the side of your head. That's seeing in the other, other dimensions. And there are seers. Prophets were first called seers in the Old Testament. So they are seers. So I want to talk to those who are online and those who are watching this, whether live or recording. You may see things from time to time. You're not crazy. Even if you hear things, you're not crazy. You just have to be built up in the faith of Jesus Christ to walk in the power and dominion over it, to rebuke it in Jesus' name. And to know that you have angels with you, you know that you have God with you, and you have more for you than against you. You're not crazy. God has just given you an ability to see something that other people can't see. Yeah. So, got to point out a couple more things. Can I get a half, more, another half hour with you guys? And I promise it's a real half hour. Hmm. Isaiah 13, turn out the Isaiah 13. And I'm going to just start reading. I'm going to read it straight through. Then we're then we going to go back with another version to give you clearer understanding as to what it's saying. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Azaz, did see. So he saw it. Lift you up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have called my mighty ones for my anger. He's called them for his anger. Even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of the multitude in the mountains. Keep noticing the high places and mountains. In the mountains. Like as great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of the nations. Talk about the nations in distress gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. So he's like, come on, y'all, let's, let's go ahead. You know, let's do this thing. Because the world going to fight against Christ when he comes, the second after he comes in, after, after the rapture. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, now they come, you're talking about people, and we're talking about entities. They come from a far country, and they come from the end of heaven. Even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint. And every man's heart shall melt. See that? For what's coming upon the earth. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman in travail. And they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be like flames. 
Behold, the day of the Lord come, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations shall not give their light. The sun shall not darken. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth. And the moon shall not cease, will not cause her light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil. This is what the Lord said. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. He's going to lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. All these beings that think that they're so great and powerful, God said, I'm going to lay them low. And he already talked about the evildoers. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than a golden wedge of Ophir. So in other words, he redeeming us. And our value is greater than gold. Don't devalue yourself. Then he says, Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth and shall remove out of, out of her place. And my wrath, the Lord of the Lord of hosts, and the day of his fierce anger. So we talk about after the rapture. And when he pour out those vials and the, uh, all the wrath that's going to be poured out. And it shall be as the chase row and as the sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man hurt to his own people and flee everyone to his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, talk about all the violence that's going to be on the earth. And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Now watch this, because this happened in Israel not too long ago. Their children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes, and their homes shall be spoiled, and their wives ravaged. That's what they were doing to Israel. They killed the people's children in front of the parents and raped the women. Same thing. Verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, and they shall not regard silver or gold, and they shall not delight in it. Their bow, I'm, I'm just reading all this for a reason. And it says here, Their bow also shall dash the young men to pieces. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, on babies. Their eyes shall not spare children. We see that, and that's how wicked it is even now. Even look at the sex trafficking. Even look at the child trafficking. These folks are hideous. And it's hideous things controlling them. And Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency, shall be when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabians or the Arabs pitch there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts, now this is the part I want you to see, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures. The owls shall dwell there, to satyrs shall dance there. Satyrs? Why are satyrs in the Bible? You know, satyrs is half man, half horse. That's depicted in myth, uh, Greek mythology. The Bible says the satyrs shall dance there but it's going to make more sense in a minute and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses the dragons and their pleasant palaces dragons and palaces pleasant palaces and her time is near to come and her days shall not be prolonged so we're talking about all these things being unleashed to come back upon the earth men's heart will fail them for fear looking after those things that shall come upon the earth. Things is starting to come through already. But when we up out of here, when God take the Holy Spirit back up out of here, it's going to be pandemonium. All these things are going to be free to wreak havoc in the earth. Now let me read a couple of scriptures to you. Now, Jesus said it's when he come back, it's going to be like the days of Noah. 
So what was the days of Noah? The days of Noah was when there was so much supernatural spiritual interference in the world. Entities like fallen angels, Nephilims, running the earth. That's why the flood came, to give humanity a fighting chance. Because the flood wasn't, see, it had polluted the population, and they were commingling. And, the, and it's not just happened over years. These were, you know, like hundreds of years where the angels were spawning <coughs> children and mix, mixing genome of animals and people getting impregnated by angels and animals. And they were just splicing genes. And, all, and there were all kind of creatures that we see in Greek mythology on the earth. Giants and, 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 and all kind of weird creatures was on the earth. And, and, and so... That's why God spared Noah, because they feared God. They loved God. And in Genesis 6, chapter uh, 6, verse 8 and 9, it says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. Perfect in his generations means, generations means genome and his, bio, and his biograph, bio, biograph. What am I saying? Biology. Biology, thank you. He was perfect. His, his bloodline wasn't spoiled. He was the only one on earth who didn't give in to these fallen angels. I know this sounds crazy, but listen. Listen. How many things we taught, all, we taught on for the years that sound crazy, but then you see it happening? Listen to me. Because people all over the world are afraid even now. And they're asking questions. What are these things? What is going on? What is happening? Why are seeing Bigfoots more prevalent? Why are seeing UFOs more prevalent? Why are seeing these 10 foot creatures more prevalent? Why, why do police still have Miami shut down around that mall? Why are there still police presences out there? If it was kids, just with fireworks. Some things happen. Why did the Congressional Committee meet, have a secret meeting about UFOs with the Pentagon and folks just last week? Why are they having secret meetings if UFOs aren't real? Why are they having top secret meetings, closed door meetings, not being televised? If this stuff isn't real, I'm telling you what they are. They are Nephilim. They're demonic in nature. They're evil. I've seen videos where people were being abducted and cried out in the name of Jesus, and those so-called aliens had to leave. So much I could share with you guys. So even in, even in, in, in Isaiah third, uh, 13, verse 3, it talks about God said, I'm going to send the mighty ones and all that stuff. This is what it says. Anybody ever heard of the Septuagint? I know I've talked about that before. You ever heard of the Septuagint? The Septuagint is the Old Testament that the Greeks read in Jesus' days. So in, when Jesus was walking the earth, they had the Septuagint. For people like the heathens, people from other nations, the Hebrew word was translated into Greek so they can read it. By the by by the uh, by the theologians, by those of the synagogue, those the scribes, they translated it to the Greek language. In other words, so they could be converted. That's to the Old Testament and the what is it? The the prophets, the book yeah. of the prophets. They were all originally Hebrew. Hebrew. Right. So they wrote it. They rewrote it, they, they scribed it in another language, they translated it, just like we have the King James Version. We have English Bible. So they just took it from the original Hebrew and put it in the Greek. So this is what the Greeks read. This is what people read back when Jesus walked the earth. It's called the Septuagint. Look it up yourself, too. So in the Septuagint, the same scripture in Isaiah 13, 3, it's God said, I, I give command and bring them. So in other words, he's allowing these things to come. 
Now listen to what it says. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. Rejoicing at the same time and insulting. That's what they read 2,000 years ago. But our King James Bible has changed it. That's why I don't just read King James. I research the original. He says, giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. In other words, Nephilim, not just giants, but Nephilim. Nephilim are coming, plural, to fulfill my wrath. Rejoicing at the same time and insulting. That's how bad they hate you and I. But ain't it incredible how much, lo how much Jesus loves us? How much God our Father loved us and gave him some, his self for us? Then when, it, when we read about like the dragon in the, in the house or the, in, the, in the pleasant place and all that stuff, here's what it says in the Septuagint, 1321. The wild beast shall rest there. And the house should be filled with howling. That word howling means howlers, beings that howl, and monsters. That's what the, that's what the Septuagint said 2,000 years ago. That's what it said. It would be filled with monsters. What is monsters? That stuff that the folk is seeing is monsters. These Nephilim are monsters. The stuff, the hybrids, they're monsters. Shall rest there. And guess that's what else it says. And the devils shall dance there. Why does it say devils? In, in, in the King James Version, it says satyrs. But in the original uh, Septuagint, it says devils because that's what these satyrs are. They're devils. They're Nephilim. They're devils. Hmm? Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Why, 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 why did God tell? Why did God tell Joshua so many times, "Fear not"? Why does Jesus tell us to fear not? Because there's things that are happening and, and things that we don't know of that exist. I know it's things I've seen. So it says here, in verse 22, it says, And satyrs shall dwell there, shall make their nests and their homes. And it says, It will come soon, and it will not tarry. See, a lot of things was written in order not to scare us. That's why they took the book of Enoch out. That's why even, even, even the book of the giants was taken out. Even, even the scribe that wrote for Jeremiah, his scriptures was taken out. Because that talk about the end times too. Anything talk about the giants of the end times were taken out. And clarity was taken out. Behold, and, uh, and, and Luke, no, I'm going to read Mark. 1615 first. It says, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Luke 1019 says, Jesus says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, for years I was saying, God, why, what are you, what are you saying preach the gospel to every creature? Because I know there are creatures in this earth that are unredeemable. So you're saying preach the gospel to them? And I didn't hear anything. And what we're striving here today, the Lord opened this scripture up to me. And I heard, I, I, I heard the scripture, Old Great, Old, Old Great Mountain Zerubbabel. Even though you are a mountain, you should become a plain. And then the Lord opened that up to me. That God is saying, preach the gospel to every creature. See, the gospel is good news to us, but the gospel is bad news to the enemy. So if you feel something, you feel fear, whatever, you preach the gospel. How do you do that? Jesus died on the cross for humanity. 
He saved me and delivered me. He saved me and delivered me, which means he condemned you. I rebuke you in Jesus and preach the gospel to him. If you're like one of these folk in the mall and you see something manifest, you preach the gospel. Because the Bible says that our boldness shows them, our boldness and faith shows them their token of their perdition. In other words, their destruction is close. And I don't think for, for a moment that everybody understands everything I'm saying now. Because how many times, how many things did you understand when, what we were saying maybe a couple years ago? But then that the things start happening, you begin to understand it, right? How many things did Jesus say to his disciples they understand? We're saying this to let y'all know because a lot of people won't talk about this stuff. Because this kind of stuff dampens folk money. We've never been about money. That's why we talk about this stuff. That's why we train and we equip and prepare you to trample serpents and scorpions and to walk in the power over all the power of the enemy. Sickness is the power of the enemy. Demonic possession, oppression, and depression is the power of the enemy. Fear is the power of the enemy. You have power over all the power of the enemy. But if you don't know that, that's called ignorance. And the Bible says that my people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. That's ignorance. And Paul so said, I would not have you to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Heard one person say, well, quite a few people say, oh, we don't talk about that. We don't glorify. Ain't nobody glorifying the devil. You glorifying them by not revealing the truth about them. That P is not greater than those who are in Jesus. And that's why folk fear, afraid. They say that because they're afraid of them. Like preachers said back in the day, oh, don't store hornetsness. A hornetsness, I ain't going to only stir it. I'm going to tear it down. I'm going to burn it. In Jesus' name. Fear not, saints. See, this is a training center. And we train. Colossians 16, 13. I'm almost done. Watch ye. Watch you. Get your hands, head out the sand. Open your eyes. Like you were saying, Tay, that now you see. Watch you. Stand in the faith. Stand in the faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Believe the word of God, which will cause you to help you to stand in the faith. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. In other words, be stable in the faith. Don't be removed. Don't be easily moved. Shaken. Then it says, quit ye like men. That word quit ye like men, it lit that phrase literally means be brave and fear not. That's what that means. Quit ye like men means be brave and don't be afraid. You know, it's a choice to fear. If God says fear or not, it's our choice whether we fear or not. Even if you feel fear, don't mean you're afraid. Rebuke the fear and you stand fast in the faith and quit ye like men be brave in the face of fear and be strong it says because fear weakens us because we can't walk in faith and fear so we walk in in fear we're not standing fast in faith then we become weak and then that's when we begin to scream at those things that we're seeing or experiencing but watch, watch, but watch, you watch, he says. Stand in the faith. Stand in the faith of Jesus, what he did for us. How he delivered us, how he saved us, how he empowered us. That's the faith. And if anything or anyone ever come to deter your faith, you preach the gospel to them. Whether man or beast, 
Jesus is Lord. He died and resurrected from the dead that I might live. And he gave me power and he gave me life by his spirit. The angels of the Lord are encamped. That's, see, that's good news to me, but it's bad news to them. If the gospel is good news to me, the gospel is bad news to them. So be strong. Stand fast is, is steiko in the Greek. It means to stand firm, to persevere, to persist, to keep one standing. Keep your standing in Christ. Don't be moved. Quit ye like men. It means, like I said, uh, be brave. In the face of everything that's coming against us, be brave, O oh, saints of God. O oh, followers of Christ. O oh, disciples of Christ. O oh, these who are of that way. That's what we were called in the, in the, in, in, in the uh, New Testament, in the book of Acts, way before we were called Christians. We were called those who are of the way. And the word Christian means follower of Jesus. There's too many Christians that's not following Jesus. But I'm a follower of Christ. They call me Christian, but I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You are a follower of Christ. That's why Samuel 4, 9 says, Be strong and quit, ye, quit yourselves like men. Same, same thing, mean the same thing. Be strong and be brave. Now watch this. Now this is the enemy speaking against Israel. Oh, you Philistines, that you might be, or uh, that you be not servants of the Hebrews, as they have been to you. So in other words, you be strong. You fight the the people that's right, that they might stay in bondage to you, that they not might not be bound before you. So in other words, what I'm saying is these entities, these invisible entities, and these visible entities. They want to stand and take a stance as if they're strong so that they are, so that we can be bound to them, fearful of them. Unless we know who we are, then they're bound to us. We're going to be rebuked. We have power over them. That's what this is saying. But even they, see, see, God is telling us in the New Testament, quit ye like men. And then they say amongst each other, quit ye like men. Be brave. Be brave against these folk with the power of God. We got to be brave against those who we have power of God over. Right. And we're not saying that they don't have power because they do. Right. We just have the power who is right. the Holy Spirit. Right. The who has we power have power over, over all their power. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what did I say? Quit, ye, quit yourselves like men and what? Fight. And I'm going to turn that on you guys. Quit ye self like men, be strong, be watchful, and fight. Stand, hold fast your faith and fight. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. The Bible tells us to put on the full armor of God. The Bible tells us to do, endure hardship like a good soldier. The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. We're overcomers. The Bible tells us that greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. The Bible tells us at the end that we win. Amen. Be encouraged. Be full of faith. My last scripture for today. And I'm going to read something after that. 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it, fight it, fight it. Fight that good fight of faith. Stand fast in faith. Watch, pray, read the word, decree the word, speak the word. Oh, Father, thank you. And then lay hold on eternal life. When he comes and get us, unless we go home before then. Whereunto thou art so called, you're called to fight a good fight of faith, and you're called to have eternal life, and has possessed, professed a good profession before many witnesses. Our profession is that the gospel, that Jesus is Lord, and that he saved us and delivered us, he healed us, he made us a new creature. He's made us son of God. He gave us power over all the power. It's all a good profession before many witnesses. Stand in the faith. And the last thing I want to read to you guys, and I'm not going to preach it. I'm going to just read it to you. Let's see. Where did I 
can't find it. Here we go. Psalm 91. He that, I'm going to start from, I'm going to read the whole chapter. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High that, that deals with intimacy and relationship shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means just his protection. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He's my God in whom I will trust. I'm going to stand fast in the faith in my God. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the every trap of the enemy, and from the noise and pestilence. Everything he try to hit you with the fiery darts, he'll deliver you. And shall cover you with his feathers like a hen cover her chicks. Under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. It wasn't that in that song? Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. That's those, those spirits of, that is not sleep paralysis. It's a demon. It's a, it's a spirit of oppression that comes. It's night terrors that come. It's actual spirits that are tied to that to even test your faith or to keep, try to keep you bound in fear. Listen, he said, thou shalt not be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid of the terror that anything that try to attack you by night and nightmares or dreams, nor of the arrow that flies at by day. No matter how he try to hit you at day, no matter what thought come, no matter what kind of, don't be afraid. Nor for the pestilence that walk, the pestilence, now pestilence means, you know, bugs, curses, whatever, watch this, that walks at in darkness. So the pestilence don't just mean bugs. We're talking about entities that walk in darkness nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. You, listen, a lot of things, we, when you, once you begin to see, you'll see destruction happen. Don't be afraid. Preach the gospel. For a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Stand in the faith. You got power all over all the power of the enemy, and it cannot hurt you. It will not hurt you. What gives it open door to hurt you is fear. Fear not. Say fear not. Fear not. Say it with some boldness, some confidence, with some kahunas, but some backbone behind it. Say fear not. Fear not. Then it says here, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Then the Lord begins to speak after this. He said, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thou habitation, there shall no evil befall you. No evil is going to overtake you. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Any plague hit your house, rebuke it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a, just a couple days ago, you know, some started hitting my wife's throat and, and, and my daughter's throat. Oh my throat. We rebuked it in Jesus' name. We rebuked that plague. How your throat feel? Better. How your throat feel? Amen. Then it says, It's only with the eye oh let me see. Only with the eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee. In other words, he gave his angels a command concerning you to keep you in all your ways. In other words, to help you not to go off the track. The, 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 anything that come at you to try to break you down or deceive you, the angels is warned against for us. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. They preventing us from getting hurt, accidents, and all these things. But we have to stay steadfast upon the face of Christ, upon the rock. And it says here, and then thou shalt tread upon the lion, which is the enemy, and the adder. The snake which means witchcraft. The young lion, which means folk that serve Satan, and the dragon shall thou trample underfoot. And even though he become a dragon of people, even we just read 
that even the dragons shall have their palaces and all these talking about these evil, these wicked folks that that serve Satan we trample under feet. Jesus even said, those who say that are Jews that are not in the book of Revelation shall come down and bow down at our feet. Because thou hast loved me, God said. Raise your hands if you love him. Just, 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 just look up to heaven and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. In Jesus' name, Father. And it says, because you have set your love upon me, therefore I will deliver you. And I will set you on high because you have known my name. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, I know your name, Jesus. I know your name, Jesus. Say, I put faith in your name, Jesus. Put faith in your name, Jesus. Because you know my name, he said, he shall call upon me and I will answer. He don't answer folk that don't know his name. He answers people that know his name. And I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. If there's trouble, the Lord said, fear not. Why? Say it again. Everybody say, fear not. Why? I am with you. He says, don't be afraid in trouble. I will deliver you, and I will honor you. Don't worry about leaving this earth before your time. Because he said, long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. In other words, you're going to live to fulfill your purpose. Then he's going to show you the kingdom to come, which is our home, which is where we truly belong. But we're here for a season, for a reason. To do the will of the Father. To rescue many souls alive. To tell many people about Jesus that they might be saved, healed, delivered, demons cast out. Cripples men may hold, blind being able to see, and deaf being able to hear. hear. They'll call those out of a coma. Those who look sleep, call them up, wake them up, raise the dead. Those folk, some folk might just die right there, and then you can call them, rise in Jesus' name. Stand in the faith. He said, I'm with you. We've heard the gospel for years, haven't we? We've heard the gospel, right? Now it's time to live the gospel and walk the gospel. It's time to be the gospel. Be one with Christ and to do the will of the Father. I'm not in this for any other reason but to see the will of the Father be done, that so many lives be saved and not just be seen, but they, they, they may have a great relationship with Jesus on this earth. And not just have only a great relationship, but to get to walk in the power and the purpose for which he've obtained us to do the work of God. And I submit to everybody. Online, even here. If you're not here to do the will of the Father, you're in the wrong place. You're not going to be happy here. You're not you're not going you're not going to be blessed by these teachings if you just want to do the church church thing and hear a good word, hear music for about a half hour to an hour, and get your money and go home. We're about the will of the Father. Those who are looking for something more, something deeper in Christ, I encourage you to come. Those out of state, I encourage you to watch, because there are people out of state that are watching. There are people that are in state and that are in the Atlanta area that are watching. I encourage you to come. Because when these cameras go off, a lot of times stuff jump off. God be moving. And, um, and we'll also be starting some ministry training again in uh, March. And we're really going to go there. We're going to really help people. And uh, we've been getting, it actually people that don't even go here have been asking for requests of when the training's gonna start again. They wanna be a part of the training. So um, everybody, quit you like men. Tie up your bootlaces. Tighten your belt. Stand up. 10 toes down and your heels to the ground. With the confidence and the power and the boldness of the righteous, the righteous, 
are as bold as a lion. Fear not. We have no reason to fear. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Any questions or comments from anybody? We went a little longer than we usually did today, but that was good. All the questions in the beginning and the comments. That was the. That's what this is for. That's what this. That's why we have a mic set up here because we. Everybody's important. Everybody's important. And the question that you might ask, somebody else may have that that won't ask, or somebody online who can ask, and we encourage you to. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find a way for people that are watching to. Or you can put it in a text, or even. Uh, I think we'll what we'll start doing in the it. chat. Huh? In the chat. In what? In the chat, yeah, they can put them in it. But there's some people that might need to, to talk. Maybe we'll bring the ministry cordless phone in here and they can call that number and ask a question on, on the phone so everybody can hear it. Maybe we'll do something like that. But this is all about preparing the saints. God told me, the Lord told me, He said, Son, prepare your brethren for my return. And that don't mean sit there and look for him to come. That means, he said, feed my sheep. Be, a, she, be doing your purpose. And blessed are those who are found so doing that when I return. Let's be about his business. Amen. Amen. Questions, comments? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We know this is a lot. And it's, 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 it's more than like a lot for people to handle. But, Lord, just, just by your spirit, let them just take it in a little at a time, Lord little at a time because this stuff is so important it's, it's paramount that we know and understand for the days that we in are evil even isaiah said darkness covers the earth and gross darkness to people but they will be drawn to the brightness of our rising we are lights in this world the light is your glorious gospel that's in us father through christ jesus let us stand for you father i thank you for the like the, they prayed in Acts chapter 4, Father, behold their threatenings. But yet, Lord, give us boldness by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name that we might minister your word, speak your word, stand, rebuke, and declare as we ought, Father, that we'll be made beacons of hope, lighthouses that will direct people to you, Lord Jesus, that we will bring them to you and help them to grow and develop in you and become those very, very people, the vessels of honor, the, the, the valuable gold that you died for us to be. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now understand that we just squeezed two weeks into one week. We were supposed to start this last Sunday. But we got it done. Amen. Amen. Does anybody know something you didn't know before? Is it helping anybody? Is it helping anybody? Is it helping your understanding? I'm telling you. Re receive the word of truth. Walk this thing, and, and, and you will see more and more. You will understand more and more. Why do you think I set it up the way I did the Wednesday before last? Last, believe in Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, don't be ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. Know of me, His apostle. Because I know so many things that I have to share and my wife have to share. Not just based on books. We, didn't, we don't read books for this stuff. This is a, we draw this stuff from experiences that God gives us. Things that we battle against, literally battle against. Paul said, I wrestle with the beast of Ephesus. And things that work. And, th and things that work. So everything that we're instructing you guys to do is what you've instructed me to do when I first came. And I've said that before. Like when I first came, I don't know what he was talking about. I was like, what, what? It's like when you read the Bible for the first time, the King James, and you're like, they're talking a different language. I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what was going on. I don't know what he was saying. But the more I was just like, you know what? I just receive the word. I receive it. And I began to understand more and more, and the Lord began to show me more and more 
which was confirmed in the word, and that's where the understanding began began to come, and the wisdom. Mm. But I didn't start out this way at all, guys. Amen. Amen. Gritty like men. Be brave. Be strong. Keep the faith. Be steadfast in the faith. And in your relationship with Christ, know him. Know his name. Use his name with faith in his name. Then he said, I will hear you. I will deliver you. The long life will, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Show you the world to come. That stuff is real, y'all. Got so many things that I can share. So many things I've seen. Beings I've seen. Angels I've seen that talk with me. Being caught up into heaven a couple times. Fell down into hell once. This stuff is real, y'all. This stuff is real. That's why we preach this thing the way we do. That's why we teach it the way we do, because we know it's real. We don't just believe in Christ. We know him and who we have believed, like Paul said. We know him. We know his kingdom. We know, we know the heavenly hosts. And we know the devices of the enemy, the tricks, the methods of the enemy. So y'all be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what you guys are being trained here for. You know, not to look to us to help you all the time, but it will become a time where you will be looked to for help because you are walking in this power and greater. Jesus said, greater shall you do because I go to the Father. Greater work shall you do. We're looking for y'all to grow to be greater and stronger than we are. So the Lord may have us in Africa or in another part of the, of the world, and y'all don't have to call us. Y'all rebuking and binding and casting down and setting folk free, and the, he, folks are being healed and all that kind of stuff. Bones are straightening out and, you know, blind eyes are open. All these things that we've done over the years that are seen in the eyes of witnesses, undeniable things, even doctors confirming things. Jesus is real. Your calling is real. The power of the Holy Spirit is real. Who you are is real. So stay steadfast no matter what people say or think about you. Stay steadfast in Christ. Amen. 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 Father, I just thank you for this word. You got something? No, go ahead, because I was going to close in prayer. Again. Again, yeah. No, I don't worry. No apologies. Come on. Um, I just wanted to. Oh, there you ready? Go. Um, I guess I just wanted to share like what's ha what has encouraged me, like from the word, just yeah. like because what we've been talking about, you know, before. I think you know I I would put a lot of stress on myself, like okay, I have to overcome the power of the enemy or whatever, and it's like you know just realizing that we are not our own, you mm -hmm. know, like the Lord, we are his, and, right. you know, he sealed us, and, like, he's at work in us, like, Amen. we are literally his temple, right, you know, like, anything, everything that's going on in the world, you are the, you are the temple of the kingdom of God, right. and it's like, there is no fear, there's no need for it, because you are his, and it's like, he's at work in us, and um, you belong to the Lord, and the Lord belongs to you, Amen. you know, as it says in the word, and so, I don't know, like, over the past, like, month like that's just been something that has really transformed my mindset but also encouraged me in my faith like there's no reason to fear like he's Amen. literally he pulled me and he repurposed me he cleansed me he redeemed me he put his spirit in me i'm his temple walking mm -hmm. you know like the power of the enemy literally moves out the way when a, a, a man of god or a daughter of god comes in the room that's and so right. i don't know i just wanted to share that for encouragement Amen. that is so true Amen. Amen. glad you shared anybody else 
Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I thank you that your word says the entrance of your word bringeth forth light and gives understanding. I thank you for the light coming in through your word and giving understanding at every level where people are, Lord, that they might understand more than they did before that your will will be done in and through us all, that we will be one in Christ Jesus. In, in Christ Jesus, that you will operate as one through each and every one of us unified, Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Father, open up our mouths, put your word in our mouths. We hide our word in our heart that we don't sin against you. Keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let your will be done in us and through us. From now until the day we go home, whether you come get us or you just choose to get us in the rapture, whatever it is, Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done. Let the angels ascend and descend upon us. Thank you for meeting every need, Lord God. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, Lord God, for that you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from all disease, all distress, Lord God. Thank you that you sent us the word of your spirit and the word of your son. And that should your word shall not return to you void, but will accomplish that which you sent it out to do. We love you and we adore you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing, glory, honor, power, dominion, and might, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Who is like the Lord? Such beauty and majesty, such glory, such grace, such love such hope, such peace, such joy. Lord, oh, let us become more intimate with you. Let us draw closer and closer to you that you might draw closer and closer to us. For in your presence is the fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures evermore. For who shall ascend into the holy temple and to the mountain of God? Those who have clean hands, clean hands and a pure heart. Let our hearts be pure before you. Let us not touch the unclean thing. You said come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. Let us not have agreement or fellowship with darkness and things in darkness, Lord God, but rather reprove them, Lord. Father, let us stand for you. Let us live for you. Let us stand by you and live by you. Let us stand in you and live in you. Let us walk in you and live through you, Lord. Let your will be done in through us in Jesus' name. Thank you for thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. We love you, Father, in Jesus' name. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Love you all. Love you guys. God bless you. We pre appreciate and are honored that you joined us today, whether online or here. And uh, come back Wednesday at 730. In Jesus' name, these are building blocks. Take this home or, or if you're already home, research and study this stuff yourself. You're going to find it to be true. And meditate on the word of God. Amen. Fear not, neither be dismayed, for the Lord is with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Be blessed. <laughs>